And Nick, you had a very full day today. You also spoke with the president of Lithuania. What was the message that he and the other Baltic leaders uh, had today? Yeah, they arrived here with a real warning, a concern that their countries could be the next Russian target. That's a product of some of their interactions with Russia recently, uh, but also a product of their history. Lithuania was occupied by the Soviet Union, then briefly by Nazi Germany, and then the Soviet Union again for uh, five decades uh, until it became independent in 1991. It joined NATO in 2004. And just in the last week, tensions have increased because the country is implementing a ban of goods traveling by rail between mainland Russia and the Russian enclave, Kaliningrad. And so I spoke to President Gatanas Nauseda inside the summit this afternoon. President Nauseda, thank you very much for joining us. When you arrived here, you said this was the last chance to adopt decisions that will be strong enough to stop Russia. Do you believe the decisions NATO has taken today are adequate? The decisions the NATO summit uh, took, I think, fully uh, meets our expectations. We have to understand that situation is dangerous, the situation is very serious, and we have to take bold, decisive, decisions and uh, I have to say with a certain satisfaction that it was really historic. NATO will increase the number of troops in your country in the Baltics from battalion level about a thousand to brigade level over three thousand but you've been calling for many more than that. Is the brigade level sufficient? We have to admit that currently we are not ready. We do not have sufficient infrastructure to accommodate a brigade size a battle group or unit. And uh, this is the reason why we have to speed up this process. So far, brigade size is okay for us. You've said that no part of NATO should have any weakness, but perhaps NATO's most vulnerable part, of course, is the Suwaki Gap, the distance between mainland Russia and the Russian enclave of Kaliningrad. How vulnerable is it? We uh, understand that this is a weak point of our uh, spot of our collective uh, defense. This uh, NATO summit uh, is a green light for preparation in order to be aware of these risks and to uh, deal with this uh, threat uh, adequately. Last week, uh, Lithuania stopped goods traveling on train between Russia and Belarus uh, and Kaliningrad. Uh, Russia's made threats. In response to that, how serious do you believe the Russian possibility of responding militarily is? I don't believe in uh, such scenario because since 2004 we are NATO member and we have very clear assurances, which were repeated many times also by, by President Joe Biden, that Article 5 is sacred, uh, rock solid. And, you know, it's not so easy uh, to make harm on uh, Lithuania because we are quite well prepared. We did our homework because since the very beginning, since the beginning of our independence, we realized that Russia is a long-term threat and probably we have to prepare. How do you believe the war in Ukraine should end? Uh, there is no other term. Ukraine uh, should win this war uh, if uh, it will be not the case. The situation in Europe, situation internationally, will be very complicated and very dangerous. We have to avoid this uh, scenario. French President Emmanuel Macron has said that the uh, Europeans and the U.S. should avoid humiliating Russia. Is there a Eastern European, Western European divide over how this war should end. You know, I don't understand this kind of rhetorics because Russia humiliated itself so much by starting this war. We have to do our best in order to uh, support Ukraine in this war. Do you fear that some Western European countries could end up pressuring Ukraine to concede some territory in order to find peace? It would be morally uh, um, just unacceptable uh, to push Ukraine to make any concessions on the territory. Do you believe there is pressure on Ukraine to concede territory? I don't think so. NATO is united. I believe in unity uh, which has certain ambitions and this kind of unity I trust in and I 
saw this unity here in Madrid. Over the last few weeks, uh, Moscow has withheld some natural gas from Europe. Uh, you've worked for years to achieve energy independence from Russia, uh, and of course you've been able to ban natural gas imports recently. Uh, do you believe the rest of the European Union is trying to pursue the same policy that you are, and can they? I think uh, they will be uh, pressed to pursue the same policy, but we understand very well that it takes time. But if you will not start today, we will not get to the result tomorrow. To do the same as Lithuania did, to let all the illusions uh, about uh, Russia or engagement with Russia. Senior German officials admitted there was no plan B. There was, had been no plans at all Unfortunately, not to use Russian energy before February 24th when Russian energy. I remember my conversations with former uh, Chancellor uh, Angela Merkel, but they decided to go this way. Now this way proved to be wrong. Late last year, you allowed Taiwan to open a diplomatic office in Lithuania using the title Taiwanese representative office. That was the first time any EU member had used the word Taiwanese in, in the diplomatic office inside the EU. Uh, Beijing was furious, launched uh, basically a, a trade embargo. Uh, you've said you weren't consulted on the name change, but overall, why do you believe it's important for Lithuania to support Taiwan? This is not diplomatic office. This is a straight office uh, we established in Lithuania. The reaction of Chinese authorities was not adequate, I would say. You know, we are the country which tries to uh, respect the principles and values. Sometimes we pay high price for that. But this is our policy towards other countries which are fighting for their freedom. and. I think Lithuania is very consistent in this. And sometimes we are example for some, some larger countries. President Seda, thank you. Thank you very much.